Hey guys, Matt with remove-malware.com. In my last video, I took a look at Norton Internet Security 2012 and its detection and removal capabilities, which uh, on this test were pretty much uh, next to nothing. Um, it, it barely removed anything, just a little piece of spyware and a couple of cookies. So uh, to follow up, since we, we know from my previous videos that Norton Internet Security is great on blocking stuff, um, you know, if you have a fresh uh, machine with uh, you know no infections on it, anything like that. But uh, if, if you have a machine that's already infected, um, you're going to have some problems um, trying to remove those existing infections. Now, this machine is a few days old now, so um, Sonar is now finding stuff. Uh, you know, three or four days later, since I've booted it up. Yeah, so it's found some of the malware that's on there, some of the malware that was causing the redirections. But on the first day, it couldn't find anything. Sonar wasn't doing anything, even after a full scan. So what we want to do now is, just for the heck of it, we want to see what's left on this virtual machine. What stuff um, can we get rid of with um, some extra tools, like Norton Power Eraser, uh, Malware Bytes, Anti-Malware, and um, we can follow up with a Kaspersky uh, bootable scan, Kaspersky rescue disk. So I can grab this. This is the Norton Power Eraser. This is a free download. Just do a search on Google for Norton Power Eraser. It's the first link there. And um, I'm going to go ahead and double click it just to get a scan going. And power races are pretty easy to work with. Um, all you really have to do is just click scan for risks. And it wants to restart just so that it can insert a driver so that it can scan for rootkits. So we will let it do that. Okay, uh, PC rebooted. And Norton Power Racer is just scanning my computer. It's going to check for updates. And I think the whole process, um, I've used this before on this virtual machine. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, um, it's done scanning. It took five minutes, something like that. And it found two additional items. Uh, my host file is infected, and then this OVXIA, some EXE that's on here. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do now is um, go ahead and hit fix. And it's going to create a uh, system restore point. So after this is done, um, what I'll do is go ahead and jump back into Google, do a search for um, some more free antivirus, a uh, free antivirus query in Google, and uh, see if we get redirected, anything like that. Then we're going to go ahead and load Malwarebytes, uh, the free edition, and then we'll find uh, we'll we'll finish up with a uh, bootable Kaspersky rescue disk scan. So I don't really need to do any of this stuff, but sometimes it's neat to kind of show people how to uh, clean up stuff after something doesn't do it for you. So, and I'm not sure how many videos will have you know these kind of part twos. Maybe I'll do it for every one of them just to create more content for YouTube, <laughs> or maybe I won't. Just depends on how much time I have. So we'll see what happens here, or people can. You know, tell me if you guys like uh, these kind of videos where I just kind of go beyond, you know, the application that has failed and, you know, clean it up with some of the uh, tools that I use on a daily basis. So, just let me know. Okay. Well, it said it removed and fixed those uh, two issues. So, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just download... Uh, Malwarebytes. 
and this is the free edition. Um, I usually just go to filehippo.com. It's just really easy to get the stuff that I need to get downloads. I'm going to go to full screen here. Um, just gonna go to view more here under Anzi Malware, and there's Malware Bytes Anti Malware 1.60.1. And honestly, when I'm working uh, like at a client's house, I will update Malware Bytes and just do a quick scan. That's usually more than enough um to find anything crucial anything big time running out there oh and and before i run malware bytes um i need to give uh norton power racer a little test here let's see if we're still getting uh redirected so we'll do a search for free antivirus like we did before in part 1 of this whole thing uh, we went to free.abg and we were getting redirected on almost everything we went to. So that site loaded okay. Same abg type of site, free.abg, that loads okay. Uh, let's try like two or three more. Here's a vast. Good. And Avira. Perfect. And let's do one more. We'll just do PC tools. So yeah. Uh, Norton Power Racer, and they don't give it much pub publicity out there. Hopefully I can a little bit. Uh, it was able to detect uh, a lot more. And, and honestly, Sonar kicked in a few days later and detected three items as well um, so yeah nice little app it's free NPE Norton Power Racer so let's see if there's anything else on here something that Norton missed and Norton Power Eraser uh, missed and these are all the things I really have to do um, not in any certain order sometimes I'll use the Kaspersky rescue disk right off the bat and then follow up with the malware bytes and then um, follow up with a few more things. So the fact that we're actually able to update um, malware bytes is a pretty good sign. Uh, it means that anything super hardcore out there is just not not happening. And um, this little window right here is Norton basically begging for our email address so they can, you know, keep dibs on us, try to sell us stuff. That's pretty annoying. I wish we could just kind of opt out of this and say, hey, you know, I'm considering Norton right now, but um, I don't need to sign up for an account at this point. Thank you. So they needed to ditch that thing. That's annoying. So, especially if you're just evaluating some software, I mean, just not needed. If I want to buy it, I'll buy it. You don't need to collect my email address every second. All right, so I'm fully up to date on malware bytes. I'll do a scan. We'll see what Norton has missed. Um, malware bytes wise so back out of here. okay malware bytes um, really coming back with hardly anything here uh, it's got one object let's uh, see what it is it's some adware adware dot relevant knowledge so I can hit remove and we're not going to reboot right now so um, the last thing I do um, it would be to run a scan with the Kaspersky rescue disk just to see if there's any kind of rootkits or anything else hidden uh, running in the operating system right now um, so 
I'm going to go ahead and um, get that thing all loaded up. i got to make a CD, and uh, I'll be right back. So anyway, it's a few days later here. I got busy working on some computers and had to watch my girls and junk like that. So it's a uh, 3-6-2012. And I'm on to the last step of uh, the cleanup on this virtual machine. And this is the Kaspersky Rescue Disk, which has gotten a little makeover since I've uh, last built one. I just built a brand new one, and it's totally different. Um, it's awesome. So I'm going to have to do a little video on that one, too. Uh, anyway, I've updated it just a few minutes ago. You can see completed one minute ago. Um, and we're going to go ahead and scan um, disk boot sectors and the entire C drive of this uh, virtual machine of this computer that was infected. So I really don't think there's mm, hardly anything on there, if anything at all. But um, I just want to follow up with one of these offline scans uh, for every single uh, uh, virus uh, removal test video that I do for 2012, just to make sure you know there's nothing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, object scan, and it'll start off like that. On this machine, it should take about 15, 20 minutes, uh, if that. So. So as soon as it starts, if you had like a boot kit, a root kit, you would see uh, a little, well on the old disk, you'd see like a little notification down here in the bottom right. And you knew right away uh, that, that that client had a boot kit, root kit, and um, it was going to go ahead and disinfect it for you. So uh, I love the Kaspersky Rescue Disk. It's one of my favorite... Uh, bootable anti-malware um, packages out there so and it's free too but I'll get into that later anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just pause this while it's scanning and I'll be right back okay that actually took a while so let's see what it found um, detected malicious software uh, some kind of DLL it's a uh, Trojan Win32 generic. We'll go ahead and say, eh, we'll go ahead and say uh, quarantine. That's fine. It won't be there when I reboot anyway. So you can see that light is like red at this point. So it's still going through. I can hear the CD start spinning, and it's still uh, scanning here. Not really scanning, I guess, just kind of resolving these uh, these pieces of malware. So you can see with the Kaspersky uh, Rescue Disk, sometimes it'll stop right here. It'll say stopped, stop object scan ninety nine percent. It's still taking a look at the complete scan and what it's you know kind of present you and things like that so a lot of people will just stop right here and say okay well it's done you know I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the PC but no you need to wait for something like this where this turns green and you're done so really um, in the end um, there really wasn't that much left over a few days later the Norton uh, sonar came around and got rid of two or three pieces of uh, malware that were running in real time and then um, we got uh, rid of the rest with the Norton Power uh, Eraser. So, you know, not exactly great on uh, picking up zero-day um, pieces of malware. And you want if you want to remove them, it's it's not the best. But um, the Norton Internet Security for prevention is just second to none. I mean, it's one of the best packages out there. So anyway, for removal, it's okay. It's not terrible. It's just okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just move on to my next video. It's just going to be a VAS7. And um, I have uh, good feelings about that one. I've been using it quite a bit lately. So we'll see how that turns about. So 
Anyway, uh, see you guys in a little while.